which display should you rather use, a 24 inch or a 27 inch? And uh, what are the differences in certain circumstances that uh, in the based on the way you plan to use them? Today, I'm gonna compare these two ASO monitors. First up, we have the EV2451, and I'm gonna compare that to the bigger version, the 2750, as you can see. And those are both premium monitors. They have a very, very build quality, good build quality. And I think they are most popular with as business monitors or maybe uh, graphics people. And yes, I did a bunch of other monitor reviews recently on my channel, such as this uh, super huge, massive 21 by nine inch curved LG display, which was very nice by the way. So, but today I wanna look at something that's a little bit more commonly used, these 16 by nine aspect ratio ones, and then the smaller 24 inch versus the 27 inch. And what I'm gonna do right now, you're watching the introductory part. In part two, I'm gonna connect these two monitors to my Mac. As some of my viewers already know that I'm always using to edit all my footage on. So that's probably more the graphic designer's case. And next up, I'm also gonna test them under Windows because that's something I noticed. Uh, as soon as you have a little bit of a higher resolution, sometimes the symbols are, the writing is a little bit small. So that's when you want to use the scaling option. And I just wanna see how well that is, this is implemented I, either under uh, Mac OS and on the Windows. So I testing uh, the monitors under Mac in part two and on the Windows in part three. So if you want, you can just use the slider and jump to the appropriate uh, place in the video. Obviously, if you're using a notebook, such maybe as the new MacBook Pro, you want to look for a monitor that has the USB Type-C connector. From all my testing, I know that I think the LG monitors, they usually have the USB-C right now and ISO also started to release models that have the USB-C type connector. So that's also as a small side note, but I'm gonna do a test today, these monitors with the display port. And I also invite you to head over to my channel page because I think next up in the next video, I'm also gonna do a 4K display, which is gonna be really awesome. So let me quickly show my playlist here. If you want, you can head over to my channel page, check that playlist because there I have compared a variety of monitors for different purposes and I'm always going to do new ones uh, also from different manufacturers. Uh, without further ado guys, let's get rolling. Let's jump to part two. Very good. Right now we jumped uh, onto my desk and I put uh, both displays next uh, side by side connected to my Mac Pro with a display port cable. And what I always like to show first is yes, obviously uh, this is 16 by nine in full HD and it says 20, uh, 16 by nine, 27 inch. I think you call it W, uh, best I display this here in the side card. You can see the resolution, everything uh, right there. But why don't we do my favorite comparison? I'm just gonna pull up my video editing software because obviously if you uh, do a lot of creative workflow, maybe it's not video editing, maybe you're just editing pictures. You usually need a lot of workspace to see your images and then to do the editing work itself. So let me open up a project. And right here, you can see that's about the space that I get from a normal 16 by inch, I mean 16 by nine, uh, 24 inch monitor. So that's the timeline. And I'm just quickly gonna move this over to the other monitor so that you can get a good impression of how much more screen real estate you all of a sudden get if you use a bigger, higher resolution monitor. And yeah, I mean, this is quite a significant size. And uh, if you pull this out right now, then obviously you have a bigger timeline. You have more elements that you can put here to add transitions, effects, add some text, maybe do a little bit of uh, light color grading. But uh, one downside that I noticed in all my different monitor comparisons, as you can see, this is the big LG that I did recently, is that the higher the resolution of the monitor, obviously you have more pixels per inch. And what that tends to do, if you run the display at the native resolution, so you see the bigger one, the writing gets a little bit smaller. So overall at the normal full HD, if you look here, there's a taskbar where there's the finder, that's a tiny little bit bigger. So maybe if you step up to a 27 inch, that's not that massive, but if that would be a 27 inch 4K display, then it would be tiny if you run it at native resolution. So you wanna make sure that when you're using a monitor that the symbols and writing is not too small for you. Otherwise, the alternative that you obviously can do is you just go to settings 
and then uh, yeah you can change the resolution of the display uh, you see here it says scaled so that's uh, different obviously the 16 by 9 24 inch uh, you should be fine I mean I think it's the perfect ratio between pixels per inch and resolution you can just keep that at full HD but as soon as you step it up uh, what you can do is you use scaled and you just use one number smaller but as you can see here now the writing gets bigger but you lose some of this additional space so my personal conclusion the finer you can pick the resolutions here in the scaled the more you can adjust it perfectly to your liking because right now this is a little bit bigger than here so that's also not perfect uh, in my opinion so that's uh, just a small thing to keep in mind when picking a display that when you're picking a high resolution display you might lose some of that screen real estate because you have to scale so with uh, that that concludes the test with the mac so let's just jump to part three and see what happens if we connect both of these displays under windows very good now we jump to part three i think that's what uh, it, what's interesting to a lot of people how does these two monitors stack up under windows as compared to mac os and first up i'm going to just quickly open the web browser and you can see that's about the screen real estate you get when for example browsing the web on youtube and uh, the video editing software i showed you under mac because that's why i'm using it so and if i move that over again you have a good uh, feeling right now for what kind of space you get if you step it up to a 27 inch versus the standard 16 by 9 uh, 24 inch uh, ASO monitor obviously the same applies for monitors of different manufacturers but I like to use ASO that's a very nice brand for business or creative work uh, only downside uh, same as under macOS as soon as you step it up with the screen resolution obviously the higher your resolution is the smaller these uh, symbols and the writing will become and normally if you're coming from a 24 inch full HD display you are used to these proportions so the moment you switch over here everything will be a tiny little bit uh, smaller in size so that your only option is to go somewhere into the system settings and adjust this appropriately I mean I showed you how to use the scaled function under macOS on the windows obviously here you can go to display settings identify your displays and then scroll down and you have the display resolution setting the main message i want to transport uh, convey to you is that yes you can have a bigger display yes you can have more screen real estate but you got to be careful because the higher the resolution the smaller the writing is going to get and then you have to be aware of that if that's comfortable for you or if you can change that in your particular operating system and other than that what I also found about these two displays, they have a slightly different uh, menu. Uh, good thing about the Azor, they both have the light sensor, so they are perfectly capable if you go in here. So that's a really nicely made uh, menu. And if you uh, move your finger here, uh, you can actually feel uh, where the touch point is and then the display reacts to this. And uh, to have the sensor automatically change the brightness, you can switch, switch on the echo, echo view function. The echo view optimizer is probably not something I would use because it's my understanding that that saves energy by changing the image colors maybe a little bit or the brightness level. And personally, uh, the echo view you can use, but the echo view optimizer I don't like to use uh, simply because I work with the video footage and I want the best consistent colors. And uh, yeah, I mean, I like this menu, very nice, easy to use. With the other model, yes, this has the brightness sensor here as well, but the touch points are slightly different. So first of all, it's a flat surface. You don't feel it when you touch it. And when you touch it, you see it seems to be an older style menu. Obviously, there are different generations of these ASO displays, so you wanna maybe check this out. But again here, yeah, you can uh, put the input. And then a uh, weird thing, I touched this and it shows up all the way there in the corner so i don't i'm not exactly sure what this logic is all about uh, personally i think the other display it's nicer because it's just down there where you touch the buttons so i wish they would have done it the same way on both displays uh, they are pretty much the same just a little bit bigger what i noticed the stand is slightly different than the way you route the cables also, oddly enough, the 27 inch had black cables included instead of white ones. 
So I think that doesn't match nearly as well. Not sure what the logic is behind that. Obviously the bigger one, you can raise it up slightly higher. That's also a really cool feature that you can grip, grab the monitor here. Very convenient carrying handle if you ever need it to move the monitor around. For me personally, like I said, I'm using it with the Mac Pro system. Uh, I can run both Windows 10 as well as Mac OS on it, uh, depending on what I need. However, if you have a MacBook Pro, uh, one of the recent ones with the uh, Thunderbolt and USB C type connector, you want to make sure that if you get a monitor, there are sometimes different versions out there. Some support the USB C connector, others don't have it yet. So that's also something worth paying attention to. And I can list that uh, in part four just in a second which models have which that might be quite useful so this concludes the quick comparison let's jump to part four terrific right now i jump to part four summary and conclusion and we have clearly seen in this video let me bust out those notes that i have here so the monitors the displays work great under mac and windows i tested it on their both operating systems although the operating systems handle it a little bit differently I think the 24 16 by 9 is uh, in full HD resolution. It's like the staple monitor. I think that's it's very commonly sold. A lot of people still using these monitors because they are relatively affordable. And uh, if you're just a normal user, um, it's uh, maybe even already enough screen size. However, if you maybe a gamer or you're a little bit more creatively inclined, such as me, I mainly use it for video editing. The 27 inch in the WQHD resolution just gives you a little bit more headroom, a little bit more wiggle room when you do the video editing. Uh, even if it's just a little bit more space, uh, ultimately, it can make all the difference. Uh, sometimes that's all you need to maneuver around. Uh, a little bit caution, I would use, for example, if you have a 32 inch, uh, from my testing, 32 inch, uh, displays are pretty big. Uh, I found when I, for example, edit the video, the 32 inch is terrific, but when I watch the video, it's just too big. Uh, I'm just always sitting too close. And I think the 27 inch is the sweet spot between 24 and 32. For me personally, that's exactly the right size. Also, looking at my card again, the, that was a little bit strange. The image quality on the 24 inch was better. Um, not sure why that is. Maybe it was a more modern manufacturing process. Um, I assume not all the monitors are produced on the same line. So maybe the 24 inch had a higher quality panel. Um, the 27 inch, um, I think the colors were not as brilliant. Um, I'm sorry, sorry, maybe you didn't see that on the uh, video footage as well, but I really paid attention to it and the blacks are not as strong. Uh, and especially uh, I, I found a little bit background bleed on the 27 inch. Uh, I think I can overlay this here. So that was a little bit disappointing because I tested a bunch of ASO monitors and uh, only the 27 inch had that. And then, yeah, uh, USB-C. Uh, like I told you, if you're planning to use the display with the monitor with a MacBook Pro, obviously you have to pay attention which MacBook Pro do you have, but all the modern ones, they use the Thunderbolt slash USB-C and not all ASO monitors have the USB-C yet, which kind of makes sense. I think they have to put a different module in the display for the USB-C to be supported. So um, this is, for example, for the 27 inch, uh, a model that has the USB-C and one that doesn't have the USB-C. So you want to be a little bit aware that you don't accidentally order a display without the USB-C function should you need that. But for the majority of people, they still use HDMI or DisplayPort. So uh, I think it makes sense for ASO not to include the USB-C in every monitor they sell. Although in the LGs, uh, the USB-C slash Thunderbolt connection is a little bit more common or is uh, more frequently seen there. And the buttons, that was also kind of weird. Um, the 24 inch and also a 32 inch that I tested they had like the more modern button design. So you touch it, it's this very slim uh, bezel around the screen, but it's like tactile. So, and when you push it, the menu shows exactly up where you touch these uh, tactile touch points. On the 27 inch, it seems, seemed to be an older design where the surface was completely flat. So when you touch it, you don't really feel anything. And uh, the display, uh, menu sometimes pops up somewhere else in the middle of the screen 
or to the left, not where you touch. So that was a little bit counterintuitive. Uh, maybe it's because the 27 inch had an older manufacturing process, something to it. But uh, since shooting the video last year, um, I think they have made some, released some new models as well. So that's something you can pay attention to if you want, because I liked the menu buttons and everything on the 24 inch better. But uh, when it comes down to it, I still prefer the 27 inch simple because it gives me this additional space. This concludes the video. Awesome for tuning in. Uh, I'm sure you're gonna find uh, a good monitor. I, I still invite you to head over to my channel page and check out the monitor playlist. Everything is very nicely organized on my channel page. That's why a lot of people subscribe to my channel because of the useful content and organization that I provide for you here. And uh, let me know what other displays you wanna see. I see you in the next video. Have fun with your new gear, take care. And because you just watched my review, you can also be interested in comparing it, for example, against this curved LG monitor, which uh, I tested for video editing and what, uh, what proved to be especially useful for gaming. You see how much more space it provides to you this massive 21 by 9 inch curved monitor versus the classical 16 by 9 24 inch in full HD. So guys, this was a mouthful. I see you as a subscriber and in the next video, all the best to you. Take care.